David, what's with this $200 bill for whips, chains, and passionfruit.com? Yes, Matthew! I knew you were coming. Welcome to my cave of mysticism and wonder. Living room, David. It's called a living room. Say it with me. Living room. Come take a seat and I will tell you all about your future. On the floor. Am I going to be the only one sitting Japanese? Yes, I'm the important one. I get the chair. You know what? Fuck it. I'll buy it. Now, as you know, I'm descended from a long line of witches and wizards stretching back nearly a generation. And we gathered our arcane arts through the power of this tarot cards. Could you take a moment? Yeah. Now, all I need from you is to pick a card. Let fate guide your hand to decide your fate. Now, the reason you came to me, I'm going to provide my insight into your future based solely on that card. So, what card was it? Uh, the star. The star, of course, the star. Now, how does that make you feel? Uh, fine. Right, and that's how you should feel. Twenty dollars, please. Or we can open the tab. I can do that. I'd... Fine, just leave the card on the table. $20, Matthew Rowe. You didn't tell me the card was inverted! What does it matter? It matters! It matters a lot! See, the, the stars is typically a good, happy, fun time card. It means good things are coming. But when it's inverted, the good and happy and fun time, it's dead! It's gone! And it isn't coming back! Shit, I'm sorry, Dave. It's okay. Now that you know what's coming, you can take steps to avoid it. Just avoid things that are generally displeasurable or uncomfortable or just cause bad feelings all around. Shouldn't be that hard. Also, on an unrelated note, uh, we're overdue on our Shiflix episode, so uh, I queued up the next 1313. I will see you on the couch in two minutes. Thirteen, thirteen, Nightmare Mansion. Or maybe it's called A Dream Within a Dream? Maybe it's called uh, The Beginning. It's, it's actually called Son of a Witch as well, but uh, it's tough to track down. I'll yeah. that. But yeah. It's um, still The Beginning. It is the first 1313 film. The Origin. Made. Uh, had another production company even on it. I can't remember exactly. No. Nah. But um, yeah, it was, it was actually almost a thing. Up until, uh, what part? Uh, uh, it started, right, that part. Anyway, plot? I can do it. I can do it. Actually, it really was even before the plot. Oh, okay. It no, was really saying, when, when Rapid Heart, the logo came up, I mm -hmm. think there was a glitch oh, in the, uh, the, uh, the actual footage. So I got off on a pretty bad start yep. with the logo. All right, so plot of 1313 Nightmare Mansion, as I will be referring to it. Um... There is a guy named Sadler, right? Yes. Sadler, uh, who is inviting all these people to a big end of the school year party. And his name is spelled differently in the Netflix. Yes, it is. I, I'll, I'll no, the give that for Amazon. forgiven. Uh, so, uh, Sadler's inviting all these people around school for a big end of the year celebration at his totally awesome mansion. Um, uh, it's not even his. You no. Know, so, uh, he's, he's inviting these people and he gives them these weird invitations that all have different drawings on them. Uh, let's see, there's one of a man, a dog, a PlayStation controller, a broken heart, a pentagram with a cross in it, and a wine bottle. A wine bottle. That's right. So there's six people total, not including Sadler. Um, so then they all start showing up for this big old party, and the moment they touch the doorknob, they all pass out and then wake back up in the house in their underwear. Except for the one girl who uh, isn't like a full nighty and completely, totally covered up. So, lose points on that. <laughs> Only from the hetero crowd. 
So, uh... But also, you know, every single uh, actor in this have the exact same type of underwear, yes, too. It's like, strange. Same. Very. Uh, so the, the movie then progresses what where shared? each of the invitations showed what sin this person had in their past, and Sadler was collecting their sins. So the dude with the dog killed his dog. The dude with the person is actually secretly gay. Uh, the dude, the girl with the broken heart. Which in this movie is kind of silly. Yeah, the girl with the broken heart. I have no idea. Uh, the one with the wine bottle ended up crippling his mother. Yeah, they didn't actually go over the girl. The one with the dude, life. even the pentagram and the cross. That makes zero sense as well. Yeah. Anyway, um, so through a whole bunch of things of like them killing themselves and stuff, the major through line is that um, uh, he convinces the one guy Charlie to kill one of the other ones. And so that's continuing through the movie. The other two are just trying to figure out what's going on, the main guy and girl. Uh, they end up having this really awkward sex scene. Sex scene? Sex scene? No, no. It's not even that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, yeah we, we might as well just go right into the acting. Well, hold on. And then uh, the entire reason he was doing this was he needed six sacrifices to bring back his ancestor, who was... His mom. His mom. Because uh, he's, like, ancient. Who was a witch... And they were going to rule the planet together. Because... As mother and son. Happens. Uh, uh, the dude with the dog ended up killing him instead of the other person, and they all lived happily ever after. Followed by a six-minute shower scene and a five-minute rubbing scene in bed. And then smash cut the credits. And you know what these shower and the rubbing scenes are. Fucking beautiful. Uh, and you know, for that, just go right into the acting. This has some of the most... Wooden acting I've seen in a Dakota movie. I'm free. Look, I, I, I have to say this because I'm going to draw comparisons between it throughout the entirety of this review. All right. This movie, as you know, we have been kind of going at this uh, series in a really kind of weird way. Uh, random. <laughs> it's very random. I mean, we try. We originally were, were doing it according to the ratings that we saw. We it was just kind of like from the least worst rating all the way to the worst worst rating. Uh, which I don't actually agree with how it turned out because neither the widow we uh, we saw late in the uh, mm -hmm. in the run there and that was still the best one. But one uh, of the ones that is our highest viewed out of the thirteen thirteen. Yes, it is one called Wicked Stepbrother. Yes. This is literally like beat for beat the same shit. Yeah. And Wicked Stepbrother came out after this, and if I'm not mistaken, Wicked Stepbrother was also written by the same dude. Uh yes. David Dakota and Moses Rutgar. Yeah, and so, I mean, I, 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 no. All right, so for me, yeah, when it comes down to acting, it's definitely, you know, wooden as hell. Nobody's giving their A game. Nobody should have to give their A game. There's a few moments that There's are just... shot of many TV tapes. The worst fucking things. Like, Jesus Christ, some of those takes, it's like, look, I, I could literally... Wow! I could tell the hobo what to say... The hobo on the street, I could tell him what to say, have him repeat it back to me once, and that would be better than whatever take you just used in this movie. Guaranteed. I'm free. I'm free. Guys, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking... Oh and then, like, gosh. really, and then, then six minutes of uncomfortable rubbing. The only one that really struck me, and it kind of... And not uncomfortable for us. He looked like he was uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. It flowed straight into um, script writing. Uh, the only guy that I really did kind of enjoy was severely underused. It was the guy who was supposedly the drunk. Uh, oh. He had the wine bottle. Is that his opening lines are... Nobody else questioned this. His opening lines are, Where, where are, are my clothes? clothes? Did you give me roofies? Yeah. And it's like... Which should exactly. be the first thought on every single mind of these people. And it, he's like the, wait, the what? Like the fourth person that yep. happens to? Exactly. Like nobody asked that question. And also I'm like... I still go off the idea that I'm nobody like, asked that question in all of thirteen thirteen. No, this is the only guy that we've seen. Uh, unless we have like really a rusty memory, but no, it's like you know, it. We have seen so many of these movies, and nobody has ever once questioned the fact that they were pretty much nude. Now, like, and of course, everyone you got people who are gonna bitch like, oh, well, you missed the point of the movie. I get what this movie is. Yeah, it's the softest of softcore porn. This is quite possibly the most. This is soft model porn. porn. Yeah, this this is, is model porn. Compared to all the other thirteen thirteen movies that we've seen, this is the most that actually borders on trying to 
do that. Do this is a softcore thing. This honestly is like the equivalent of like a cinematic strip tease without the tease. Like the, the only thing that just strip. Is, the only thing that I really think of is that the other thirteen thirteen movies were all pretty much individuals doing their thing. Nobody really interacted with each other in the most sense. I mean, talking, uh, talking, about it, but not physically. Is like, what I'm saying. Oh, phys this movie had a lot of physical interaction between True. people. There was a scene where the two guys were licking a knife together. Yeah, uh, they were rubbing together. It it, it it had the most amount of 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 more stronger innuendo towards shit yeah. uh, than any of the other movies. Uh, I guess he just got kind of milder as it went along. Uh, I mean, that's what happens with sequels, man. They just dilute from the original. Especially when the sequels happen, like, ten within the next year. Yeah, I mean, well, this one apparently was, like, a copy written in 2010. Yes. Uh, this, uh, the technical aspects of this movie read like it's something out of 2005. Uh, because it shot on mini, it shot on mini DV, and of course, like in 2010, mini DV was still a bigger thing. Uh, I was still shooting on mini DV at that point, mm. uh, but at the same time, though, that was literally the last time I shot on mini DV. Uh, but at the same time, like, fuck, was it a uh, David Lynch shot Inland Empire on standard definition mini DV, and it made it look a lot better than this schlock. Yeah. And I'm, I, I, it's really hard for me to kind of like look at these films in a, in a naive way, not just because of the fact that we've done so many of them, but also because the fact of the matter is, is that I'm fully aware that David Dakota has done better movies. Oh, yeah. Not by a hell of a lot. Like, if you've seen like, his movie like Creepazoids, it's not a hell of a lot better. But at the same time, though, there is some legitimate production value there. The script is not nearly as... Oh, bad. <laughs> like I I'm running out of. Uh, I wish I had my uh, my extensive list of vocabulary. I have like a PDF that's like thirty words long, and in case I run out of colorful phrases to use. Um, okay, so for for tech, let's go on the tech real quick. The like you said, it's all DV and it's all boring and stupid and dumb. But I feel that the worst part is the scenes that drag. For whatever reason, I feel it's just the same to, just shot. to hit feature length because it was literally an hour and 20 and like, what, 45 seconds, if even? Yeah. If they like pushed it right there. But um, they they just had the same shots over and over Reversed, and over, looped. Over, back and forth, up and down, zoom slightly, zoom back out, and then repeat as soon as you run out. It was ridiculous. They must have shot like six shots per actual scene and yeah. they just looped it for like minutes on end. What I feel happened over the course of the 1313 back movies forward, back forward, is that back in this movie he thought, okay, the sexy scenes, that's where I stretch it out. At, yeah, that's because that's where, want it. that's where people are masturbating. But that. then in the later 1313 movies he decided, well, maybe just the walking around the house part. Maybe hello? that's where I'll do it. Hello. hello. There was a lot. Of, there's a lot less hellos and a lot less going blue in Seriously, this movie. Like they managed to walk into like the first guy walks like up and down the house. Uh, he goes like the whole way. But everyone else, generally, they encounter the villain Sadler within like the first room they're in. They don't really go anywhere. More or less, yeah. It may take a little bit of a time for them to. There's get, like that get to one it. shot where, like, you know, the guy and the girl are going up the stairs, and they're like, "What did you hear that?" And they're just gonna go right back down the stairs. And Literally, like, they were like, they just had a scene downstairs. They went up the stairs, and then I think there was like a dog noise or something. So there's a dog. Let's get out. And then they just right said like, "Oh man, we need to get out." And then just ran down the stairs, and then cut to a scene, fifteen minutes later, maybe. But we're going back up the stairs, and, and, they, and they're opening the door, and they're like, "We're going to get help." And it's like. Uh, I'm not gonna leave him behind. I'm not gonna leave my friend behind. Well, then what should I do? You're gonna help me, okay? Close the door and just. How about go for help? They even made the point of like, oh, what am I supposed to tell the police that a 300 year old witch boy is keeping my friends captive? No, like, no, you just tell them that last part. Keeping my friends captive. My friends are being captive from a guy with a knife. He's off his meds. Are you fucking uh, really? That type of shit. You can't figure that out. I don't know. I mean, like it's. It, it's honestly like it goes the the beat for beat thing with with Wicked Step Brother is pretty much almost exactly right and like yeah. if you remember our review of that 
Uh, that movie it. was the most full of padding that we ever saw oh, of God. the original of our original run of these movies. It was terrible. And this one is pretty much up there. The one thing I will say, and I said this during the movie too, the shower scene comes out basically the bum fuck out of nowhere, including <laughs> including the rubbing scene too. They had just a straight ending. Sadler was dead. Yeah. They said, "All right, now I'm gonna go after that girl because I know because they had like a do over sort of thing, like Edge yeah. of Tomorrow esque sort of like back in time." <laughs> and they they were like, "I'm gonna go make sure see if that girl wants to go out with me." Yeah, you do it. And everything wrapped up. Picture of the sunset. Everything was great. And shower, shower scene. So I will say, and, like, and I told David this, I will say that at least uh, Dakota has gotten better at placing his shower scenes in movies. Uh, as well as the rubbing scenes, even mm -hmm. though I still think they're ridiculous. And again, guys, for the people who think that, yeah, of course, we're not the target demographic for this, it doesn't matter. No. The fact of the matter is, though, like, I, I have seen many of all kinds of smut. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is, though, the fact that this is meant for a gay audience has no impact on me whatsoever. Yeah. Dude, if you guys have seen some of the... One of the things I did back when I was in college is I wrote articles for my school paper asking whether or not pornography was art. And I went through a good portion of that talking about the gay subculture. The f so the fact of the matter is, though, regardless of the fact that this was made for a primarily uh, gay audience and is primarily nothing more than really mild whacking material, if even, it's not very good whacking material. Like the fact of the matter, like, like there, there's this really stupid uh, series called the Emmanuel Seven series. I don't know that. And when it's like, it's uh, it, it it's it's a French uh, softcore porn and all that kind of stuff and like. It, it, you see, like, the bareless minnows and stuff, and a lot of humping, but, like, most of the people are clothed almost entirely. So, like, uh, but you can see where all the porn acting comes from. Uh, it's like, you, you want to know how a girl can fake it? Watch watch an erotica film. Um, or watch it when Harry met Sally. I mean, that, that works or, hey, just well. you have sex. Zing! Uh -huh. But either way, I mean, just the fact of the matter is, though, the tech is just... Especially for Dakota's filmography, hmm. uh, it's really amateurish, and it's amateurish. You would think that the, you know, the movies, when the, you kill, you keep going further and further, they get a little bit more refined as they hmm. go along. The quality of the thirteen thirteen movies kind of ebbs and flows. Yeah. It's like there's no real consistency, and with this being the the beginning movie of that, that actually makes the rest of the movies make a lot more sense. I actually cracked a joke though that I'm like, oh, what if this is thirteen thirteen Nightmare Mansion because that's the name of the address? Yeah, and it's, it's just this house, thirteen thirteen whatever street. Yeah. Actually, he says he says the name of the street, uh, Jerusalem Street. Yeah, J Jerusalem Street. Yeah, he says that on there. So, hey, check Google Maps, see if that's where the house is. Thirteen thirteen Jerusalem Street, Malibu. Malibu. Well, that uh, Dakota, we met, we, we know where you live. We're coming. <laughs> we know where one of your houses are. The other house is in Canada, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, for for me, for, you know, can I just jump to the final thoughts? We'd love to talk to you on the show, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, so for my final thoughts on this, it's it's all just the same. It seems a little. It was interesting when, like, the very <coughs> first shots of this took place at a car at a nondescript location. I'm pretty sure using handheld camera. It just. Eh, man, whatever. Point being is the fact that it wasn't in his house and it wasn't in his backyard. Yeah, it was, and it was on his front wall. It's always strange to see that. Let me let me make that clear. It's strange to see somewhere that, that isn't, isn't his, his house. house. That should not be something I am able to say. This is this is just ridiculous, the fact that that's a plus sign. That should be a neutral, that you're using multiple locations. All in all, like I said, acting... That should be standard. Yeah. A acting's wouldn't... The plot of this really is just nothing... They did do, I would say, a little bit more characterization than any other 1313 film, and the fact that the fact that he was collecting sins meant that he was forced to give backstory on these characters. Uh -huh. But it was it was literally like an improv session sort of backstory. It's like you are a shoplifter who feels guilty about what he did. Okay. <clears throat> Why are and also another thing that I was curious is like you know, okay I need to see your invitation I'm like you're the ones you said yeah said the invitation you should know what it is is like so like, you should just simply have said it's like 
You're curious about your infotasia, aren't Here, you? Here's my thing. If you want to know what the picture is, right? Here's what you could have done. You, instead of, because he handed them these piece of paper, say, make sure you bring that invitation. Then when it finally came time, he took the invitation, showed them the picture, and said, like, here's what it represents about you. Every single one of these people was knocked out for a period of time, leading into their showing up. Which so, also they were disrobed. Why not have it that whatever sign or symbol you wanted was just written on them? Obviously, it's you, too easy. you had them naked at some point. You could have just been like, oh, what's this on my chest? Oh, well, it's a dog. You see, we know you killed your dog and you did this and that. It's like, that would have been a thousand times easier than, oh, that piece of paper I gave you earlier, let me have that back. No, it doesn't actually mean anything, but this dog, let me tell you what that means. This dog. Overall, this movie is stupid. This movie is boring. This movie should have been, this movie is like the reverse Return of the King, where it only had one ending. But it still kept going. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It's like the extended edition. But yeah, uh, overall, it's just an average 1313 movie. Other, I mean, overall, I can't really say too much more than what we've already said. It is a very stock standard Dakota 1313 film. Uh, and in all honesty, it's probably one of the more forgetful ones, which is kind of funny because you would think that a title named Nightmare Mansion... Would, would, would ring with you a little bit. And and we, we have, what is it, the, the last movie that we're doing mm -hmm. uh, has uh, a nice ring to it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. and uh, we've seen the trailer for it, and it, uh, whew, it's, uh, it's up at like Bermuda Triangle levels. Yeah. Uh, and I think, or UFO Invasion, I think it's even more than that. Uh, it's like they're bringing up the sciencey shit. We'll see. Uh, but we will see. But overall, the fact of the matter is, though, that this movie is one of the weaker ones. It's not the one that I utterly detest, like Cougar Cult. Uh, but at the same time, though, I just I couldn't give two fucks about it. Yep. It's... And that is what we think of 1313 Nightmare Mansion. This is the end of the review. The review will stop here, because if we were to add anything more on the end of it, uh, it would just be... Unnecessary. And insulting. And insulting. So bye. Bye. Okay. And visiting jail. Oh, so hey guys. Tennessee, Iowa. See with my sisters we play like snake eyes that you lose all of your money. Do you have Kentucky? Uh no red. No. Okay. Oh, uh, where are you? 220. What's the rent? Running up